Yo, what it do, homie? G dog, money, apple fritter, pie, other cool things. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the lighting's gonna be weird on this one uh, because I am on a dot cam. Ah! There's my face. Um, so this one, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about getting the trig functions. This is the parents, parents, the parents, parent trig functions. And yeah, you know, you got your uh, daddy and mommy mommy wears a dress yes something like that parent trig functions um so real quick i'm just going to remind you guys like if we are looking at a function we have f of x equals x right don't forget that this really means your y value right so this is really the y y equals x that function um i'm sorry again that the lighting is crazy i can see it on my computer screen it's going all psycho nuts and there's the bell you are late for class so make sure you guys get there in time and apparently there's a fire drill possibility going off so that could be interesting too because i don't know how to pause the video this is a new way of doing it but you don't really care so anyways f of x means y so don't forget that so say if we had the function f of x equals sine x Please, please, please do not forget that this was our angle, right? We would have said like sine of pi over 4 or cosine pi, pi over 4 or whatever, right? That was our angle. And the thing that it came out to be at Christmas was our function value. Function value, right? And if this really just means y then all that means is in our ordered pair, if we are trying to graph this on a Cartesian plane, remember that crazy guy, Descartes, that had a fly on the ceiling, so he made the Cartesian plane, right? Like on a Cartesian plane, you know, your XY plane that you're used to graphing things in and making bananas and monkeys and all sorts of different things, you know? Oh, that's a fat monkey. I'm sorry, monkey, they had too many bananas. Um, your angle will be your X value and your function value will be your y value. So we could have the point like pi over two, um, one, because sine at pi over two is your y value. So on our unit circle, uh, da, 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 unit circle, yeah, hopefully that shows up, I think it will. Um, you would have the point, oh, I need it back. You would have the point right here because your angle is pi over two, your sine is your y value, which is one. So on your Cartesian plane graphing, we would have the point pi over 2, 1. So with that being said, I'm going to look at this sheet right here. Hopefully you have it. If you don't, eh, it's okay. You may want to copy it, though. But these graphs, those ones right there, we will always give those to you on quizzes, tests, anything like that. And we even have homework and transformations, which will be the next video that we'll talk about. And we are going to give you these graphs so that you don't have to free draw them. I'm sorry that on this, it is kind of hard to see the lines, but I should be able to get pretty close enough so that you will understand what I am talking about. So with sine, I'm going to pull up my unit circle, say at zero pikes. Notice on your x-axis, those are all, whoa, <laughs> my pen's moving too fast. On your x-axis, right across here, those are your angles. So if I say, if I plug in sine of zero pi, sine of zero pi on my unit circle right here, look at my mouse over the unit circle, zero pi is right there. Sine is your y value, so we would have the point at zero. Cool. Well, if my x value is pi over two, sine there, pi over two is up here. Sine there is one, so I will have the point pi over two, one. At pi, my sine value is zero. Three pi over two, it is negative one. Two pi, it is zero again. Okay, and don't forget the unit circle translates the same way if we go back across the unit circle in the negative direction. For negative pi over 2, that would be down south at 3 pi over 2. So your sine value would be negative 1. So going this direction, I have here. And then I would have here, there, and there. And then what I can do is I just create a wave. Hopefully this will be pretty good. Do 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 do, banana phone, banana phone, banana phone. I feel really weird because I can't pause the video and I used to be able to pause the video, so I'm just doing stupid things. But that is your sine wave. Okay, you will have to know the parent function, you will have to know the points, you will have to know all of these things on the left hand side. For your domain, that is your x value. So any x value you have possibly included in your domain, 
Well, it's going to keep going in the same pattern forever and ever. It's going to keep going in the same pattern forever and ever that way. So it's going to be a cycle. This is all cyclic motion. It's going to repeat itself over and over and over to infinity and beyond, just like Buzz Lightyear when he flies away and saves all the days. So for your domain, since it goes on forever, it is negative infinity to infinity. Your range, the lowest y value that we have is negative 1. It is inclusive. And we go to 1, which is also inclusive. <coughs> Coolio? Cool. Now, period. Whenever you write a sentence, uh, I like bananas. That says bananas. When I write a period, I start the same cycle all over again. And apples. That's not a sentence. I'm sorry, English people, but it's not a sentence. Don't trust it. But and that's that says and. I promise. But I wrote a sentence. I wrote a period. And then I wrote another sentence, and I ended it with a period. So pretty much I'm just following a order such that when I repeat something, when I repeat another thing, I mean, I'm not repeating that I like bananas again, but I'm repeating the sentence of a sentence, the sentence of a sentence. That doesn't make any sense at all. I am repeating that I am writing a sentence. After each sentence, I make a period. So pretty much for your sign or anything like that, a period is just when it starts to repeat. Repeats. The same sort of pattern. So if I start from here, and it's just how long it is before it starts to repeat. I'm going here, now I'm at pi over 2 distance, now I'm at pi distance, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Once I get to 2 pi, it kind of does the same thing over again. You can also see it looking this way. The graph goes up and does the same thing over again that it had already done. So after a distance of 2 pi, that distance right there is 2 pi. That is your period. That is how long it takes before it starts to repeat itself. Cool. Cool. For symmetry, on this picture, I cannot fold it over the y-axis and have it map onto itself. I cannot fold it over the x-axis and have it map onto itself. So if I turn my graph upside down or I fold it on the y and the x-axis, then it will map onto itself. So this is origin symmetry. Origin symmetry will always be odd. Also, the way I remember odd is if you are going away from the y-axis, if it is doing the same thing, or sorry, moving at the same rate but in opposite directions, it is an odd function. So it's kind of doing that, because I'm going away from the y-axis, I'm following my function. It looks like it's moving at the same rate, but it's just going in different directions. This side's going up, the left side is going down. Okay, so that is an odd function. Is it continuous? Yeah. And the zeros. The zeros is a little bit weird because you have a zero at negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0 pi, pi, and 2 pi. So I'm happening at every n pi, but n has to be an integer. Don't forget an integer. Wow! It is just a whole number. Pretend like you can read that. That says whole number. Whole number. Okay, so I would say x equals n pi. Now here, n is an element of the integers. Okay, so that says x equals n pi. It happens every n pi. As long as n, that n right there, is an element of, that's what that little crazy e looking thing means. It's just math lingo because we're lazy. Is an element of the integers. That crazy z just means the integers. Just like our fancy r, fancy r, that means the real numbers. Cool? Cool. Because you said cool. I know you said cool because you like bananas and bananas are cool. Alrighty. Lift up my tape. Oh, boop. Move up my graph. You can see my desk. It likes bananas too. All right, cosine, this video is going to be a little bit long, so I'm going to try to go a little bit quicker. Uh, cosine, same sort of thing. I mean, you're just plugging in the angle values, but now cosine here, the x value is 1. So at 0 pi, my y value is 1. At pi over 2, it is 0. Pi is negative 1. 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Same thing in the opposite direction. And then again, just like sine, it's kind of just shifted. Pew, 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 pew. 
the other teachers probably think I'm pretty strange. It's okay. Everybody's a little strange. All right, so there's my cosine wave. Domain, same thing, goes on forever. Range, same thing, goes from negative one to one. Period, it is also two pi before it starts to repeat itself again. For symmetry, this one I can fold it on the y-axis and have it be the same thing, like it'll map onto itself. This little section right there will fold and be exactly on that little section right there. So this would be y-axis symmetry. As it goes away from the y-axis, it is doing the same rate in the same direction, so this would be considered an even function. Also, if it is y-axis symmetry, it'll always be even. This is continuous, so yes. No, don't put that H. It's crazy. I'm crazy. You already know that. All right, with this zero, notice I have my zeros at 3 pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So I have some sort of pi over 2 value, but this number right here always has to be an odd integer. So I will say x equals n pi over 2 as long as n is odd. As long as you give me that, I will be a happy pappy. Kofu? Ko. I wish I could pause this because I feel really awkward now. I just feel like I'm talking all the time and I want to take a drink of something. Um, my beverage right here, I'm drinking an energy drink, but I shouldn't be. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can look inside of it. Oh, no, it's not too bright. Maybe if I turn on the light. No. Don't drink these. They'll kill you someday. Not good. But I guess we'll all die. Well, no, just stop talking, Mr. Pike. You're silly. Oh, I got a new pen holder. Well, it's not new for anybody else anymore, but it's still new for me right now. Because this is 2015. So maybe by the time 2020 rolls around, I'll have another new pen holder. I'll be really excited about that one. I'll watch this video and realize that I wasn't even really excited about this one because I'm so excited about my new one. And it doesn't even really make that much sense. So anyways, I'm going to look at Tangent now. Tangential. I don't know what's wrong with me, you guys. Hopefully by the time that my students in, I don't know, 2040 get this video, uh, they will have figured it out. And I will be okay. Although, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right, with tangent. Tangent's a little bit weird. Because don't forget that tangent is sine over cosine, which is the y value on your unit circle over the x value on your unit circle. So if I look at 0 pi, right down here on my unit circle, I have the y value is 0, the x value is 1, so I have the point 0, 1. Yay! If I go to pi over 2, I have 1 over 0. Well, dang. Hey, <laughs> I got an email. Uh, 1 over 0 cannot happen. That is undefined. So that will create an asymptote. That will also happen at 3 pi over 2. And every pi over 2, then fourth. Then fourth. Act like it's a word. You know what I mean. Don't act like you don't, or you'll hurt my feelings. Okay, and then I have the point pi that I need to figure out. So at pi, I have 0 over negative 1, which is also 0. 2 pi was a repeat of pi. Negative pi is a repeat of that. And negative 2 pi is also a repeat of 0. Okay, so dang, I still don't know what my picture really looks like yet. However, don't forget that we still have all these other fancy points on our unit circle. So if I look at pi over 4, which is like 1 fourth, because pi, is, or pi over 2 is 1 half, so it's like right in the middle here. That point is square root 2 over 2 divided by square root 2 over 2, which is the same thing divided by itself, so that is the point at pi over 4, 1. If I want to go on this side, I need to figure out over here. So maybe if I look at negative pi over 4, because that's straight down here where 7 pi over 4 is, I have a negative divided by a positive, so that will make negative 1. And then, hey, oh, fancy day, there is kind of a cubic function in the middle there. And it will repeat the same pattern to infinity and beyond, just like Buzz Lightyear, because he has to go save all the people. 